Rub up your engines. Jimmy asks, hey, Scotty, which brake pads last the longest? They've had various types of brake pads over the years. They can't use asbestos anymore because it creates lung cancer, so they tried all kinds of stuff. Now, generally, the ceramic pads last the longest. If you don't like noise, if your car came with ceramics, you got to replace them with ceramics, so they make a lot of noise. But regardless of what your car originally came with, if you don't like noise, the Akebono, A-K-E-B-O-N-O, it's a Japanese company, they make the best all-around pads for as long as they're going to last without making any noise. There are pads that technically will last forever. I use them all the time. I go to AutoZone. <laughs> They have the gold pads. They come with a lifetime guarantee. They're excellent pads. They generally don't make any noise, but they give you a lifetime warranty. So when they wear out, and all brake pads, of course, eventually will wear out friction. A little bits of them come off every time, only tiny bits, but eventually over hundreds of thousands of braking times, they get thinner, and then you got to replace them. But AutoZone replaces them free. I've had cars like my 94 Celica and Whenever the pads did wear out, I just took the old ones to AutoZone and they gave me new ones free. So <laughs> they will actually last forever. They just keep replacing them free. It doesn't cost you anything. But, you know, if you want the absolute best pads that'll last the longest and make the least noise, the Akebono pads are really the best. Crankshaft. When you buy a used car, you're always telling me to have a mechanic check it out. It's a great idea, but how do I get people to let me bring a car to a mechanic? <laughs> well, if they don't, don't buy the car, period, you know. Buying a used car can be a real pain in the rear end. There's no arguing that. But any honest person, if they're serious about selling it, hey, they'll ride in the car with you to the mechanic. I've had more times that people, especially at a lot, the salesman will come with them to me. I don't mind. I just look at the salesman and say, look, I don't need any information. You know, I don't want to be rude, but, you know, don't talk to me. I'm analyzing the guy's car. Just for honesty's sake, I say, you know, go sit over there on my lounge chair. <laughs> and then I can talk to the customer without the guy listening in because, hey, I don't take any social pressure. I don't care. I'm getting paid to tell the person the truth about the car. And if it's a clunker, I'm going to tell them it's a clunker. And if the salesman asks, I'll say, here's the problems. La, 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 la. And here's what I found. I even had one guy bring it over. And I said, look, car's been a wreck. And the guy, the salesman, shows me the car fix and says, look, it's never been wrecked. I said, that's a piece of paper. Here's the car. Look, here's where it's been wrecked. An idiot can see that. You know? <laughs> so if they don't let the mechanic check it out, walk. Trust no one when you're buying a used car, except for the mechanic, like myself, who's independent. Don't take a Jaguar to get checked out by a guy who works on Jaguars. He wants you to buy that Jaguar so he can make money fixing them. Go to somebody like me who works on all kinds of cars and tells the truth. Ashley's ladies. Scotty, is it correct to assume that a four-cylinder Camry will have a greater lifespan than the V6? They're both excellent engines that can last a long time. There's no arguing that. Four-cylinder engines, straight four in a row. There's less parts. V6, you got three on one side, three on the other side. There's more parts. If you drive just a regular driver, generally the four-cylinder one will last longer. Get better gas mileage. Realize, if you're hauling all kinds of crap and towing stuff, a lot of times the V6 will last longer because it's got more power for pulling and towing. You got to understand that, but in normal driving, yeah, the four-cylinder one. I've seen four-cylinder ones that had 500,000 miles on it. Nick 98, good morning. I'm looking to get an 05 Infiniti G35 Coupe with a six-speed manual transmission. What do you think of that? Okay, I am not a fan of used Infinities. They can become endless money pits as they age. But one of their biggest problems is the automatic transmission. So you got a six-speed. So you don't have to worry about that. Those things have catalytic converters that go bad all the time. And the only thing that will make them pass the test is buying dealer OEM catalytic converters, which are going to cost you thousands of dollars to replace them all on that car. And almost every one I've ever worked on when they got that age or older, the catalytic converters went bad, and it cost a lot of money. So I would still say... If it passed the test, the mechanic puts a scan tool and says, no, it's in pretty good shape now, and you want a toy to play around with on the weekends, yeah, why not if you can get it cheap enough? But don't pay a bunch of money because they become endless money pits as they age for a lot of reasons. And yeah, it doesn't have an automatic transmission, so it's a better one, but still, it's got all the other expensive Infinity stuff on it. Big love to all, says, Scotty, what's the best undercoating for a new Toyota 4Runner that will live in New England? We don't need any. It's already made. And when they build the modern cars, especially the Toyota, Toyotas, the, they put them together, frame and stuff, and then they send them into this giant tank that has electrostatic paint in it. The paint's one polarity, and then the body of the vehicle is another polarity. You don't need any undercoating. 
Uh, my mother still lives in Buffalo, New York. She's got a 14-year-old Corolla. It doesn't have any rust on it because even back then they were doing that. They had the coating and they have it right. They know what they're doing when they're making cars. At least Toyota does these days. That you're not going to have the rust as in anything else. If you live in an area where they use a lot of salt in the winter, you still want to rinse the bottom off because if you get chips here and there, of course, then things problems can have. So you want to still rinse it off. But you don't need to pay any extra money on new ones. They're already, especially a Toyota. Don't waste your money on any of that crap. It's already got it all on it. Mom, it says, Scotty, do I really need an oil catch can for my LS2 engine? It's not direct fuel injection. No, not really. They're well enough set up designs. The reason you put them on direct fuel injection systems is because the direct fuel injectors spray fuel right into the cylinder. On other cars, port injection, the fuel injectors are in the intake manifold, and when they spray, they spray the gas that gets sucked into the engine as the intake valve opens, so they spray raw gasoline all over the intake valves. Raw gasoline is a very good solvent, and it keeps it from carboning up with a direct injection. No, nothing but air comes in there and the oil and contaminated goop that comes through the PCV system. That's why you put an oil catch can on a direct injector once to keep any of that oil and contaminants from getting on the valves and then burning up and creating problems. You don't need to do it on your LS2 engine. Johnny John 333. I'm trying to figure it out. I got a large screeching noise in my car. Well, of course, you know, if it'll make it, if you open the hood and rev it up, then you can hear with your ears. But a lot of times it has something to do with a fan belt. So what you do is you can take all the fan belts off an engine and still run it. So run it and then See if the noise stops. If it stops, you know it's something one of the belts drives. Then grab each pulley one at a time, turn them, see if they wobble or they're dragging. And then you can say, okay, yeah, that system's got a problem. It's not, and it still makes the noise when you take belts off. Then check the brakes. They'll often make screeching noises. Pray that it's not like the internal to the engine or internal to the transmission. That is big money then. Juice 3344. What is the purpose of a ground wire that connects to the body and to the engine block? Okay, your entire car is negative electricity. Everything that's metal on it is negative electricity, and then all the power wires are positive electricity, because for a DC things to work, you gotta have power and you have to have ground. It's just how it works. So you always gotta make sure that those ground wires from the battery to the frame and from the battery to the engine are good. You can take them off every once in a while, clean them off, really go with electrical cleaner, buff them or the buffer so they're shiny, then bolt them back on. And if you want, you can even spray them with a little corrosion protector after you bolt them on. Not before. I didn't go once. He sprayed all the bolts and then he put them together and they were coated and then it wouldn't even start. So. <laughs> But you got to have power and you got to have ground. So you got to make sure those ground wires are good. And in old cars, they often get rusty and corroded. So if they are, like you say, clean them or just replace them. Hurry. I'm looking to buy a used car. I have a budget eight grand. I'm looking at a 2014 Lancer. No. <laughs> Those are terrible vehicles. Don't throw your money away. For eight grand, you could probably get a pretty good used Camry or really nice used Corolla or a Honda Civic if you wanted a little zippy little car. Don't buy that Lancer. Those things, woo-wee, they're money pits. You do not want to buy one of those things. They're just, you don't want to throw your hard-earned money away on something like that. 718 Cayman S. I got a 19 Audi A4. Is it bad to clean the leather interior? including the seats to water and vinegar. Okay, water and vinegar is a good cleaner. Uh, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. But on the seats myself, I have seen the results of good leather conditioning kits. I use this English company. I don't even remember the name now. They sent me a case of the stuff and I still got a bunch of them left. It comes with a cleaner, then it comes with a preservative that preserves the leather. And that's the best way to do it with leather seats because realize leather is what? dead animal skin. <laughs> you want to clean it and then you want to recoat it with stuff that keeps it preserved. And just pure water, I mean you can use it to clean it off just like my leather jackets on motorcycles. I clean them off with water and stuff. But I also use preservatives. I use the same kits on the leather jackets. I got a leather jacket still that I wore when I was a teenager and that sucker still is supple because if you keep doing it and for years and years before I had these leather kits for car seats, I just used that uh, mink oil stuff, and that works great still. The mink oil is real slimy. You put it on your hands, you wipe it all around, and it preserves leather too. But most people aren't going to do that on a leather seat because it leaves a little bit of a grime. I didn't care in a leather jacket. I just hung it up to dry, and after a while, it would dry out. But the leather preservative kits that they make just for leather seats are the best thing to use for that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.